Dean and Carly are here from Self Help Housing, and we've got the website at housingkitsap.org. You can click on this uh, real exciting new way that folks are working together for housing, mutual self help housing. Again, housingkitsap.org and then housing services. You see the drop down there, mutual self help housing. Dean Carly, thank you so much for coming on the air with us here today. And uh, this is a kind of a cool deal and it's happening in Shelton as well. We'll tell you where in just a little bit, but how did this start? And uh, tell us a little bit about this. Hi, well, thank you for yeah. having us. We're very excited to share the opportunity. I'd yeah, good morning. Tell us a little bit about mutual self-help housing in Kitsap and Mason County. Yeah. So we uh, we have the opportunity to uh, provide a affordable housing program here in Shelton. It's uh, just off of North Cliff on yeah. Jones Street. Uh, we purchased the land a few months ago. Now it's four or five months ago, and we're mm -hmm. we've been marketing for uh, uh, income qualified folks that are interested in building a brand new house that uh, is energy energy efficient, safe, uh, affordable. Um, it's modest by nature, but it's it's very very nice. I see a bunch of floor plans on the North North Cliff Park, and it goes from 1,100, almost 1,200 square feet, up to near 1,400 square feet with a variety of sizes of bedrooms and bathrooms and, and garages. We talk a lot about uh, Habitat for Humanity here in Mason County and the way that those folks who become qualified for those homes have to put in a certain amount of sweat equity back into those uh, homes that are being built for them. And this is kind of the same deal with, with this service. Yeah, very similar. So if they have, if people haven't heard of self-help housing before, which is a nationwide program, we just facilitate it here locally. Um, it's a government loan program uh, through USDA. Uh -huh. uh, then we always say, "Have you heard about Habitat?" <laughs> We're similar to that, sure. um, where our home buyers do build the houses themselves. Uh, our the way our program works is that they build in groups of homes. So you and seven of your neighbors will build all eight houses together. Uh, they all go up at the same time, and uh, once they're all finished, y'all move in and you all own your really homes. That's really cool. Yeah. I can't even build a Lego house, so how do I do this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, uh... who's, who's the skilled workers here on these so, ones? So we have, uh, our program is grant funded, right? And so we have a uh, supervisor that's on site that helps train the families. And so it coordinates all construction, whether subcontractor or family labor. Um, Saturday meeting, everybody has a kind of a week plan. Um, okay, we're, you know, framing on whatever lot 10 is today, and maybe we're doing trusses on lot 12 and so on um uh, that person will provide all of the um you know all the teaching all the safety stuff things like that and then uh, we'll create groups and then go build for the day and then uh, they're on on site 40 hours a week wow mm -hmm. that's really a cool like model yeah. yeah so you really we really emphasize that there's no experience necessary i mean we joke but you don't have to know how to read a tape measure. You don't have to know what a hammer is. Good, <laughs> we'll I don't know any of those things. <laughs> It'd be perfect for you. <laughs> yeah, we start with the basics. Really? Yeah. Sure. That's what awesome. do you get uh, a sense of nationwide when you hear about these communities that go up about the bonds that are built within that neighborhood? I mean, if you are working blood, sweat, and tears with seven of your now neighbors, on a neighborhood, I'd imagine that helps in a whole host of other things where it comes to, you know, just being mindful of your neighbors, knowing their names, understanding how a neighborhood watch might end up working out, things like that. It's totally true. So yeah, for sure. I mean, these, these, these folks are going to spend 10 months, maybe 12, uh, uh, you know, building their home. They're going to spend every Saturday together. They're going to work, you know, nights, rain, sunshine all of those things and um it is a community i mean in in not just between you know the group of homes but uh that in that particular build group but there's going to be two in, in the case of Northcliff. um they even look out after everyone you know um there's a lot of times we'll talk we'll hear about the community you know fourth of july parties and, sure. and um it's much more than just driving home and opening up your garage door and going in and closing. I mean, uh, this is a community. So you mentioned 10 mm -hmm. to 12 months. What is, is that the timeline on these builds? Because it's just 
the group of folks that will be working on it, so it is kind of a longer timeline? It, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the the mutual part of self-help is they all share labor. Yeah. Um, and so uh, because we're working with novice folks, it does take a little bit longer. Um, but, you know, it is um, very well built. And, of course, you know, there's codes and all these things, but our supervisors help manage the, the quality and, and the progress. So at the end of the day, it's a very, very good home. And in this Shelton neighborhood off Northcliffe, we we were just talking that it might be a little bit of a quicker build for the group because it is smaller than our typical 10 house group. Uh -huh. um, the floor plans have been refined, so they are going to be a little bit more streamlined in the build process. And uh, we're putting our most senior construction supervisor out here, and he has a history of keeping the group moving along quite quickly so so what's the schedule or the uh needs uh for folks who hear this or head over to the website housingkitsapp.org and they see this uh program of mutual self-help housing what what do they need I, I see i have an application here in front of me but what are some of the things that they should have available or ready to go and what are some of the um there's some income limits and stuff which i think is well below the median income of folks in in the county and so so what are some of the stuff you have to have yeah so the very first thing that we look at is the income because it is a rural development program we have maximum income limits we can't serve above so we we calculate that first you'll see on there and it's on our website that those numbers are quite high so yeah. a lot of people qualify in that range um, we, it is also a mortgage loan that you earn in the end to pay for the cost of construction so we want to make sure that people have enough income to make affordable payments for that mortgage um, and then we take a look at your credit history to see if there is any you know it just has to be decent nothing mm. crazy but mm -hmm. just make sure that it isn't a huge liability for the for the loan uh, they just want to see that it's you know not too many missed payments not too many derogatory accounts uh, of course when we look at that if we do find anything we guide you through the process of you know m maybe look at this or take care of that sure. and when you're ready then we'll move forward because you want you, you want to do everything you can to get these folks in in a, have a home absolutely yeah. Make wink one of these generational yeah. changes. How many homes have been built up in the Kitsap County area? Or how many oh. neighborhoods? Is, is it a fair amount? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Tons. So this program is actually operated um, in Kitsap County since the 70s. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, to be honest, we don't have a definitive number, but it's over 1,500. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. whole nationwide here, if this is right, 50 years, 50,000 homes? Yeah, yeah, and that was a few years ago. So we're about 55,000 now. That's this is a great. really yeah. fascinating thing. There's about 90 grantees throughout the nation. What made you think about finding the Northcliffe area and coming down to Mason County? Yeah, it's an interesting um, question. So, you know, the pressure for housing is everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. And Kitsap County is is, is booming. And, um, you know, average home now is about 400,000 in Kitsap. Um, and we have we have our leads, but, you know, land is hard to find. And, and, and even if you do find raw land to develop, it takes a couple years. Sure. We have a production goal as part of our grants. And Mason County has been an eligible area for, um, I, you know, 20 years, I think, uh, for a long, long time. Um, with uh, recent changes, values are back up in this area. It's booming. Um, we're able to find some land that uh, fit our program. And, and here we are. That's pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. You can find out more again at housingkitsap.org. There's all sorts of information. Uh, additionally, on the 22nd, there's a Super Saturday Financial Resources Fair, which is up in Bremerton at the Kitsap Community Resource Center there on 8th. Uh, give you some more information on how you can get your finances in order and kind of make sure everything looks good if you were to go this way. But under Housing Services, you see that Mutual Self-Help Housing on that link. We'll put it in the show notes in the interview where you can find the different parks, including the different floor plans for that North Cliff. This is great. This is making the American dream accessible to so many more people. Yeah. It's really yeah. an important project. It's That's great. cool. Dean, Carly, thanks for coming on and talking with us about this. And we'll have that, again, links to this in the show notes when we post this mm -hmm. interview. Thank you so Excellent. much. Hopefully you, you get a lot of responses and some help on that. That's yeah. cool.